Yo, what's up guys? You got Pokeam here with another Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee Wi-Fi battle. Today we have a team with Hypno. Uh, basically, Hypno has Nasty Plot and a pretty good move pool. Uh, well, not the best, but I mean it has Psychic and then it also has Shadow Ball and Dazzling Gleam. So a, a decent move pool at the worst. Uh, but it's pretty cool because it allows Hypno to actually hit pretty much the entire... Uh, the entire generation for neutral damage at worst, right? So, uh, the way I made it was I paired a bunch of Thunder Waves with it. That way, it would allow Hypno to hopefully outspeed Pokemon and then put in some work from there. But, yeah, if you guys missed any of my previous Wi-Fi battles, there is a playlist down below. I encourage you to check that out. Maybe I use one of your favorite Pokemon. Also, if you, um, if you would like to see the team that I'm using in the sets, you can check that out down below in the Poke Pace. But, we'll just pause it, guys, until we find a battle, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, so we have a game versus Bug Boy Alec, and truth be told, he has two bugs, Venomoth and Parasect. So uh, I do like my Hypno in this just for its ability to easily just start pressuring something. Uh, I'm assuming he'd lead off with something like Golem to get up rocks early. Parasect is also a pretty good lead. Hmm. So if I lead off with my uh, Starmie, I match up Ball versus Needle King. I can Thunder Wave the Venomoth and not die. I match up Ball versus Arcanine. I match up Ball versus Golem. The only thing I don't match up Ball versus is the Gyarados uh, if it's Mega, which it should be. So I'm actually gonna lead off with Starmie in this game. I feel like after I Thunder Wave quite a few Pokemon, all I gotta do is Thunder Wave, Arcanine, Thunder Wave the uh, Thunder Wave the Venomoth, and Thunder Wave the <laughs> the Gyarados and. Big Hypno outspeeds everything else, so at plus two, it might be able to do some damage to everything. Plus, I have Dazzling Gleam for Gyarados, which is really nice. So, I might just say I don't care anymore and lead off with it and just try and Thunder Wave Gyarados immediately. Like, if he leads off with Gyarados, I might try and Thunder Wave it myself. He could lead off a Parasect, though, and try and Spore something. I'm pretty sure this is Gyarados. Yep, leads off with Gyarados immediately. Smart, smart. But this should mean that he will Mega Evolve. Uh, so I'm basically forced to go out into my Zapdos here on what I'm expecting to be a Mega Evolve and a Crunch. Now, like I said, I would Thunder Wave this, but I need I need Starmie just to, for a little bit longer. A little bit longer. Um, at this point, at least. Because Arcanine switchings are really non-existent. Goes for Crunch. Does some good damage and gets a defense drop, which is very, very, very sad for me because my opponent might be tempted to stay in and go for a waterfall or another crunch. I'm going to attempt a U-turn though, anticipating Golem. I think Golem makes the most sense. There's some good nicknames. These are some really good nicknames. So a few good things coming out of that. I do get a crit, which is pretty important. Uh, and it will allow me to get in my Starmie. But yeah, that crit was pretty important. Because uh, that may be the difference between me knocking it out with Mega Drain from Muck. So what I want to do now is uh, actually double out into Arbuck. Anticipating my opponent to want to go out into their Parasect. I feel like you wouldn't let me Scald you for no reason. Obviously, Golem would go down and you would not get anything. So by getting this thing in, ideally I, I, uh, I lure in the Golem and I'm able to knock it out. Yeah, you should go Parasect. Just based on how they played immediately, they're, they're not bad. Yep, they do go Parasect. Not bad, not bad. Probably just to try and spore me, but... Uh, poison Jab is for sure my play. Always. Any damage on this is going to be nice for Hypno. Uh, and they may go right back out into Golem, fearing the... Uh, they could go Needle King as well, but they may go back out into Golem, fearing the... The poison job because if I get damage on this if you guys didn't see their team It's very 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 weak to Alolan Duxtro's earthquake Especially because Gyarados had mega evolved right so if I get good damage on this Parasect, uh, it will be worse for them. I Hope I make sense right because this is one of their earthquake immunity uh, resistances. Sorry not immunities. They don't have any immunities left So they may just stay in and spore me, but I will get off some good damage with the poison jab I'm liking this game so far though I'm liking it a lot. I mean, at the same time, I also don't really have Needle King switching, so... Things get a little bit scary for me, too. 
I wouldn't mind you going Gyarados as well. I'm pretty sure the Pokemon that's going to be Thunder Waving the most, though, is going to be my... Uh... They're really thinking about this play. Yep. Maybe back out of Golem? Needle King, okay. Um, that's smart. Obviously, if they went Golem, I could have actually Mega Drained them, so they might have anticipated that. So that was really cool. Good play. I have like one good switch into Earthquake, and that's Zapdos. That's not true. I literally have a defensive Starmie. Yeah, I'm, I'm wrong. I have a defensive Starmie. So, every bit of damage on Needle King is nice too, uh, for at least Glare. I should have glared there, thinking about it. But I wasn't sure if Mega Drain guaranteed knocked out Golem. Like, I know it'll be really close. So, Glare there might have been the better play. Uh, My Arbuck might have been able to knock it out. But yeah, like I said, uh, Starmie can take every hit. They go for Thunderbolt. That's trying. They were trying to hit my Zathos plus catch Starmie, which is pretty smart. In one move, that's really, really nice. I like that. I play a lot. Huh. I didn't have to poison jab there. I could have glared. I didn't realize, but uh, Mega Drain, Giga Drain does KO it. I recovered here because I anticipate them to go Parasect. I think Parasect makes a lot of sense. And obviously, like I said, at this point, keeping Starmie healthy is important. But at the same time, I'm really worried about this sleep. Because this sleep could be very annoying. Like, whatever they sleep could be very annoying. I want to get up rocks, too. I'm going to say Arbuck makes a lot of sense here. Um, as far as going to sleep goes, Arbuck might not be able to do it, but at the same time, I can also burn sleep turns, too, if they opt to go for anything outside of Spore. I can't wait to use a Parasect of my own. I will be using it soon. So if I'm the opponent, this is a little bit risky, but if I'm the opponent, I go out into Golem here to try and take advantage of the fact that my Poison type is in and you can get up rocks on this thing, right? I think that makes a lot of sense. So if I'm them, that's the play I make. They might try and damage me here, but I really feel like if I'm them, I would go Golem, so they might try and go Golem. And by getting in Starmie, I get to start clicking Scald again. Yeah, I really can't wait to use Parasect. 100% accurate sleep moves. Hell yeah. That's Leech Seed too. So they might go for Leech Seed too. Well, I'm assuming they'll go Golem. Oh, they go Needle King. So same thing. Same situation for me. They tried to take advantage. Needle King is nice too because it's more offensive. I want to say you go right back out into your... I'm going to make a aggressive play. I'm going to go Duxtrio, anticipating them to go right back out into their Parasect on the Scald. And I really, really, really want Rocks up just to pressure these switches. So I don't think you'd stay in and allow me to Scald you. You'd probably go right back out into Parasect. And I, like I said, I really want Rocks up. So we are switching a lot, guys, but that's what it is in competitive play. Let's see if they go right back out. This is what competitive battle is. Oh, they go Gyarados. It's good and bad. I might have to forgo the... Uh, I, I think I'm going to have to forgo the... Um, the That was a good play. Though it did risk a burn. But I might have to forgo the Earthquake Speed because I really, really need rocks to pressure this guy and switch him around. So I'm really at a bad disadvantage. Zapdos weakened, obviously, and everything nice and weakened. But... I do have rocks up, and uh, that means that I weaken the Venom off. That means that I weaken the uh, I weaken Venom off, and I weaken the um, the what's it called? The Parasect. So this is still okay. And like uh, after a nasty plot, Hypno does beat down everything. I just gotta start Thunder waving things too. So I'm gonna U-turn one more time here. Uh, if he has off to stay in, good play. I don't. I feel like he shouldn't. And I still want to try and take advantage of that. And the next time I get in Sarmi versus Golem or Sarmi versus Gyarados, I will Thunder Wave it. Like I said, I'm going to keep taking advantage of this. Uh, Zapdos speed-wise is all I really need. That double is really good. I really wish they went out into Parasite there because rocks on a Parasite would have been pretty free. 
It's fine. Also, my opponent seems to be okay with sleep claws, which I'm okay with too. I'm definitely okay with that. Alright, let me go ahead and scald again. That will allow me to get a Melmetal after and just click uh, Double Iron Bash. Even if they go Parasect, I don't really care. Yep, there's a big Parasect. Take that Stealth Rock weakness, take this Skull weakness. This is a good game in general. And I get a burn on them, which is pretty nice. I'll make the Melmetal play. Um, Melmetal can also Thunder Wave Gyarados, which would be pretty key. Now they go for Leech Life, I'll be able to obviously avoid that, not really care. And just throw off a double iron bash. Uh, any damage on anything is nice. I'll be able to knock out Parasect with it too. I'm fairly confident. They didn't go for Leech Seed, which is really nice too. There's a nice little double iron bash here. If they switch out, I don't think they will at this point. Yep, nice. And because Parasect put my Arbuck to sleep, I don't think Venomoth will be putting anything to sleep. So Melmetal, when it comes in offensively, just claims KOs, right? It doesn't really care. It just starts to claim KOs. So it's really solid in that regard. I'm still trying to set up for... Uh, I'm still trying to, still trying to win with my... Uh, well, you know what mine I have there. This is an odd Pokemon to bring out. I guess they don't care about Sleep Claws. Well, I mean, ideally they miss. Because you put... My Arbuck is still asleep, bro. Okay, that's fine. Whatever. I can't expect people to obey Sleep Claws on uh, Wi-Fi, I guess. That's fine. We're going to Earthquake now. Uh, ideally, I get a first turn wake on either Arcanine or Nidoking coming in. He can't beat me down with this thing anyway. Oh, you can try and cover dance up, bro. But you're giving them to me. I'll take it. Like I said, I will beat this thing down so it doesn't really matter just naturally. And uh, if I wake up here, Double Iron Bash will knock you out. So I'm not in danger of losing to Venomoth. Double Iron Bash is here. Double Iron Bash is now. Let's go, little buddy. I thought they were uh, okay with Sleep Claws because they didn't put anything on Sleep after Arbuck, but that's fine. I can't expect people to play by rules when they're not standard. This dude is getting greedy? I think that's a really poor play versus Melmetal. Because I have a good chance of waking up. This is only second turn. And secondly, yeah, you're dead. So they had a really, really solid start. And they just started throwing it away. They really gave me Venomoth, which I'm, I'm happy with. Venomoth could have been a problem if I didn't have this Pokemon. But yeah, they had a really good start. And then they just gave me this Mon. If they go Gyarados, I will for sure Thunder Wave it. They go Arcanine. So probably just try and Flare Blitz me. That doesn't matter because I have a Starmie. However, I'm not going to go hard Starmie. I don't see a reason to not sack Arbuck here. Um, Arbuck doesn't really do much. And why risk Starmie on like a Crunch? Also, I can just get the guaranteed Flare Blitz. Uh, I can get more Flare Blitz recall by going Arbuck, right? Because Arbuck is one hasty, so it's minus defense, and two, it doesn't resist Flare Blitz like the uh, like the Starry does. So I can just guarantee putting in range of Scald. I did not mean to click there, but it doesn't really matter. He should be able to two KO me. So Arcanine will go down to Scald now. Oh, he's not even at he's not even adamant, or he's not even a a, a plus speed Arcanine. All right, Starmie, I choose you. Gonna go ahead and click this Scald right quick. Scald is completely fine. It should knock out Arcanine at 50%. Uh, if he risks Gyarados, it gets burnt, which I'd be okay with risking Gyarados anyway, but I don't think he should risk Gyarados. My opponent's smart to keep both of their ground types around because I they're very, very... I'm Like, Zapdos can put in a lot of work. You actually risk Gyarados. I would rather not burn you, I would rather Thunder Wave you, I'll be honest, but... Like, I would much rather Thunder Wave you. I'm not with this Pokemon, though. I want to Thunder Wave you with Melmetal. 
because Starmie beats Nido King, Arcanine, and Golem with just Scald. So we're gonna go Melmoto here, which should not be too a KO. And I should be able to click Thunder Wave on the Gyarados, allowing Hypno to outspeed it. No defense drop, nice. Let's click that Thunder Wave real quick. He might Earthquake me, might go Arcanine. Uh, a T-Wave on Gyarados is always really, really solid. Earthquake would not KO me. We do manage to connect. Awesome. Beautiful. Okay, so that's great for Hypno. Hypno will definitely be picking off Nidoking. I mean, best case, they got full paired here, so I get off a little bit of... Oh, I'm just guaranteed faster. Nice. I didn't even realize that. That's some big damage. Hold up. That is some big damage. I wonder if Hypno knocks you out with Dazzling Gleam now. Hmm. The correct answer is no. Wow, Hypno is very weak. Alright, we're just getting my, uh... We're getting my Zapdos now. I don't need it for anything besides this Gyarados. So I don't really mind if they switch out or stay in at this point. Thunderbolt knocks them out. They are paralyzed, and they should die to Thunderbolt for my own. I can't believe how well it takes Dazzling Gleam from Hypno. But again, Hypno only has base 73 special attack. I also think that Hypno does knock out a Golem at the range of that, I want to say. Or at least very closely. Oh, uh, Hypno Psychic does nothing to Golem either. Is this right? Am I counting this right? Is there a light screen up somewhere I'm not seeing? Wow. So I don't really care if they go Golem at this point. Um, again, like I said, I already know Starmie cleans up. And this Thunderbolt guarantee knocks you out, so. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Ideally, they go Needle King over Golem. I feel like Needle King is a little bit more offensive. I mean, like I said, at this point, I win the game with uh, Starmie. I just click Thunderbolt. I don't need this Pokemon anymore to win. They T-Ball themselves, like me, but it really doesn't matter. Like I said, I don't need this Pokemon to win. I just need Starmie. I really just need Starmie. And the thing is, Starmie doesn't guarantee knockout Nidoking at that range anyway. So all I gotta do is go out into my Hypno, live one hit, which I guarantee do. Click Psychic, and... Uh, this is really the Psychic uh, setup, really. But yeah, I click Psychic here. And then I knock him out from there. Hero King's Earthquake does a lot, though. But yeah, I click Psychic. The Psychic shouldn't knock out Needle King, unfortunately. But it's gonna do a good chunk. I, I knew I'd live every hit, even a Megahorn, so that's fine. And this Psychic is the guarantee win for me, right? Because now Hypno has done... I know Hypno did one thing this game. But it did exactly what I needed for uh, for me to win. Because now, like I said, Skull was not a guaranteed KO on the Needle King at that point. But once I got this little bit of chip... Well, this is a good amount of damage. But once I got this damage off, Skull just wins me the game. And uh, Starmie outspeeds the last three Pokemon. And just wins the game with Skull, so that should be a good game. So a few uh, misplays on my opponent's part, just to go over it. We'll get another game after. Um, but a few misplays just to go over, but... My opponent definitely threw away their Venom off, right? Which I don't think was the correct thing to do at all. It definitely threw away Venom off. All they needed to do was not set up on my Melmetal. Put it to sleep, fine, whatever. That was fine, but they should have switched out immediately. Because trying to set up on a Pokemon when it resists all your attacks and is immune to one of them too, um, and just completely takes every hit, didn't just it didn't seem like the right play, period. But yep, I outspeed Arcanine. Gonna be able to knock that thing out with Scald. 
And uh, Golem will also be outsped and knocked out with Scald. So, uh, like I said, guys, we'll uh, I'll attempt to get another game. Um, ideally, we can get Hypno to do something with Paralysis Support. Even though Hypno, like I said, did only one thing in this game. Uh, well, you gotta remember, he had a bunch of good Pokemon versus it. He had two Bug types. He had a Dark type, a really good Dark type. It still gave me the win, guaranteed, right? So, it would be really lucky, but... Had I went Starmie on that Needle King, I didn't KO with Scald, and he uh, he Megahorn crit me or Thunderbolt parried me, I lost the game, right? So at least with Hypno there, I didn't I I risked less. But that was a really good game, Bug Catcher dude, uh, Bug Boy Alec. Hope you guys all enjoyed. I will see you guys with another battle uh, in a second because I'm going to attempt to get Hypno to do a little bit more because it it did one thing there. It was still useful, but we're gonna be getting another game. So I'll be right back, guys. Alright guys, so we have another game and this guy has uh, a nice offensive team. I actually do like Hypno in this for its ability to check Venusaur, uh, check Zam, and obviously Pokemon like Kingler and whatnot uh, with just strong hits or super effective damage when it comes to Venusaur's Alakazam and even Dragonite with Dazzling Gleam. So Hypno's pretty good. Um, if I'm my opponent, I'd probably lead off with, I want to say Electrode to just get up screens early, but I do still love Starmie as a lead, especially because from there, I can go directly out into Dugtrio on what I'm anticipating to be the, uh, what I'm anticipating to be the, uh, Electro lead or the Thunderbolt or something like that, and I can deal with it from there. Uh, but yeah, I'm assuming they're gonna lead off with Electro and try and get up some dual screens. I mean, that looks just like the team that I use for dual screens. It's literally dual screens, and then they replace Melmetal with Venusaur, if I'm not mistaken. So, we'll see how this ends up going. But yeah, I'm assuming they're going to lead off with uh, Sand Slash, but if they don't, they lead off with Electrode, and they try and get up their screens early. So that's why I really do like Starmie as a lead. But this is basically the team I used. They do lead off with Electrode, which isn't bad. Electrode does give me my, uh, my Duck Trio, and unless they are running Taunt, because they could be running Thunder plus Explosion, I should be good. So we go out to Ductrio here, and Ductrio will be able to get my rocks, allowing me to deal with Zam, allowing me to uh, weaken Dragonite a bit. Alright, so there's a Thunder turn one, nice. So they kind of lost a turn. I will take it. Go ahead and give my rocks up right now. He might go Sand Slash, which is a pretty good play. He could stand and go for Reflect as well. Uh, either way, I am getting up rocks here unless he goes for Taunt. And again, rocks are going to be really nice for Dragonite. And weakening everything. I'm assuming Sand Slash or Venusaur. Sand Slash, nice. So Sand Slash is a smart play because again, it allows my opponent to um, basically get up rocks their, uh, their own. Starmie's always going to be my play. I do want to be careful about Starmie though because I want to use it to Thunder Wave Venusaur. If they go for Earthquake, it's a little bit better for me because I can Scald or Recover after. Now, I, I have to be a little bit careful. I'm going to Thunder Wave here. Now, I don't think my opponent should stay in on a Water move. I think they should go Venusaur or they might try and go Venusaur. Uh, I guess they could try and go Electrode, but I feel like Venusaur makes a lot of sense. So I'm going for Thunder Wave because this will set up the game for later for Hypno. Of course, this is good and bad because now I'm also weakened for Kingler. But because I do have a Melmetal, I should be alright versus Kingler as well. So we do land the Thunder Wave. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And once again, I'm thinking that uh, Arbuck is going to be the more expendable member. Or the most expendable member. Uh, a Sleep Powder could definitely come out. That'd be a little annoying. But again, getting off that Thunder Wave ensures that Hypno does outspeed Venusaur. And I expected Venusaur to come out, which is why I Thunder Waved on the ground type. So it goes for Leech Seed here. Not so bad for me. Um, assuming my opponent wants to go Sand Slash and not Sleep Powder, I'm going to Dragon Tail. I should be able to just Dragon Tail here. Uh, if they do Sleep Powder, that's fine. I burn initial, the, the initial turn. But yeah, we're going to Dragon Tail because if they go Sand Slash, I want to force them out. I don't want them to get Rocks up. Oh, they Leech Seed Protect. Okay, so they're, they're my same set. Leech Seed Protect, Sludge Bomb, most likely. Flush Bomb, Giga Drain. So I think it's fair if I go Hypno now. Because I'll be able to take a hit. Uh, sorry about that. I didn't mean to like smack my desk. 
Yeah, I think Hypno is pretty fair. Hypno can take a hit and Nasty Plot up on this thing. That's the idea behind it, after all. And obviously, with it being paralyzed, it also opens up a door for my Melmetal, too. So, I don't want to be Leech Seed, Mega Drain, stalled out. I'd rather get in Hypno and try and get off a of Nasty Plot. Look at the way Hypno looks when it comes out. He does opt to Mega Evolve this, which means that Alakazam won't be his Mega. I'll take that. I would definitely take that. Zam being Mega would have been a little bit scary. He does get full Paralyzed, too. So, I get in my Hypno for free. Very, very nice. We're gonna Nasty Plot up right now. I'm assuming maybe you'll go something like Electrode or... I guess they could go Hard Dragonite because they do have Outrage. Venusaur is a problem. I'm not going to deny that. Venusaur is definitely a problem. But the fact that he's not Sleep Powder makes it a little bit easier for me. They go out to Dragonite. Hmm. So the problem is, I don't think... I don't... Hypno's so weak that I'm not going to be able to knock him out. With, uh, I'm not gonna be able to knock him out with a plus two dazzling gleam. Also, Outrage hits incredibly hard. Outrage hits so hard. I'm gonna go Arbuck, though. I don't think you'd Agility in front of me. I think you'd Outrage immediately. And by sacking Arbuck, I can get a Melmetal after and click Ice Punch, at least. Melmetal has a lot on its back. Yeah, I think you'd outrage immediately just because I set up I set up a nasty plot so you don't really know exactly what I want to do. And by doing this, I basically pick up the KO on Dragonite. So, really good for me. Uh, also, I get a lot less damage off on Melmetal because obviously if you went for, you know, Earthquake, it'd be a little tougher because I take a good chunk. But I resist this and we can knock him out with Ice Punch. And he's locked in so he can't do anything else. Yeah, that does absolutely... Uh, that's a good chunk. Uh, I knew it. That was a crit. Like, what? How'd I do so much to Melmetal? Hey, it doesn't matter about that confusion because you are about to go down to this Ice Punch. This is big Melmetal. Go ahead and give me that Dragonite. Thank you very much. All right, so Dragonite goes down. Uh, next time I Nasty Plot up, I can still do a ton of damage to something else. Gets in Kingler to maybe superpower me, I want to say. We're 100% going to get in our Zapdos. Zapdos does live a Rock Slide if he opts to go for Agility. Uh, I, I would love to Thunder Wave this thing, but because Melmetal is so important because they do have Venusaur and Alakazam, even though Hypno Pseudo checks them too, this is just a better play. That did so much damage. That's really smart too. So we can U-turn here. Uh, I don't expect him to stay out when he has, or stay in when he has Electrode, Venusaur, and the, uh, he has Electrode, Venusaur, and the the sand slash right if he predicts that a, amazing play on my opponent's part but i don't think he will i think he'll go sand slash or electrode and i obviously want to try and take advantage of that yep gets in the sand slash nice get some rocks damage on that and uh this should this should give me a recover with my starmie this should give me a recover with my starmie and this is I actually desperately need to recover with Starmie because Kingler uh, can knock out Starmie with Rock Slide. No, it's really close, but I can't really. Yeah, this should give me a recover, though. Like, Kingler doesn't knock him out because he's not X-Scissor. I mean, he might be X-Scissor. The, the one I had was Super Power. Ops to stay in. What, to go for Earthquake or just to get up Rocks? Either way, that was a good play. But I still like Starmie recovered. I, I'll take that. Always. Yep. Smart play. Very smart play. I want to be at one step ahead of my opponent, and I'm going to go out into my Hypno. Uh, I'm anticipating him to want to go out into Venusaur here. I can obviously threaten this thing with a water move. And if I get in Hypno on Venusaur, I can Nasty Plot up or just throw off a Psychic as well. Like, he doesn't switch in very well to Psychic. I don't like how Hypno looks when it comes out, man. Yeah, he should go Venusaur here. Yep, there's a the Venusaur. So I get in on Venusaur. Nice. I also get some Stealth Rock Chip on that thing, too. It's time we nasty plot up, my friend. Go ahead and nasty plot up. Keep smacking my desk. Ooh, he is giving me the turn advantage right here. We take this. We take this. 
Leech seeds up, that's fine. Because at this point, I knock out Kingler. I should be able to knock out Sandslash. I'm not sure if my opponent will go for the... Uh, the Protect here, because I think Protect is really risky. Because if you get full Paralyzed, I can punish you. But I'm going to go for Psychic. I, th I really think Protect is very risky. Alright, they get a they end up getting it off. I still think that was very risky, because... Had I, uh... Had I broken through, it would have been better for me. Like, I, I basically... I would have gotten so much damage off on Venusaur for no reason. So if I'm my opponent, I might try and go out into Zam right now. I'm going to go for Shadow Ball and trying to catch Zam upon switching. He opts to stay in. Very odd, because I, I 1v1 you. All right, he gets paralyzed there. So I tried to catch Zam, um, mainly because it's the only thing that can really take a hit from Hypno. But if he wants to stay in and try and 1v1 me like this, that's fine. That's my bad for predicting. I should not have... I think he knows how he wins, but he's really underestimating my Starmie. Like, you need this Pokemon for Starmie. You might have Electro, but I have a Duck Show, which just comes in. Like, you are really, really, really underestimating my Starmie. And I feel like my last guy did, too. Like, all this is so good. You're also underestimating my Melmetal. By letting Venusaur get so low. They're probably going to switch on now. They probably heard me talking about them underestimating. Nope, just lets me hit them with Psychic. So even if I die, even if I go down, I got exactly what I needed on Venusaur. I got so much damage off on Venusaur. To the point of, it go down to, it, it go down, it goes down to Earthquake. So yeah, this was such a good trade for me. I know Hypno did not do too much, and in fact, if I had clicked Psychic initially, I probably would be in a better position, but it was such a good trade, because he doesn't, he doesn't beat Starmie now, or he doesn't beat it as well. He doesn't beat Starmie plus Dugtrio, rather. I just click Earthquake here and pick up a KO. He goes Sand Slash, I get some nice chip on that, Electro goes down. Uh, I don't mind him saving this, because it goes down to Scald, and he goes hard into Kingler, which I think is fair, because it's, defen it's a defensive Pokemon, but at the same time, like, this does so much. This might be to a KO because you're, it's a very frail Pokemon HP wise, yeah. So that was something, Kingler was something I was scared of. And my opponent just gave it to me. So I kind of disagree with that. And Duxtrio does is designed to 1v1 Zam. So I'm going to give the Kingler, uh, like to save the 2% Venusaur which cannot recover on any Pokemon. I don't know if I agree with that at all. My boy Chimp back playing Smash Bros, not bad. Do -do -do -do. Sorry about that by the way guys, I got a text earlier and... I was like, wait, I didn't apply to this? I just went silent for like 10 seconds. My bad. But yeah, so Hypno did his job. Sarmi cleans up twice. Electrode isn't a problem. If he goes Zam, I can just uh, Earthquake that. He might try and get a, a Reflect, I guess. He should go Sand Slash now. If I'm, if... Yeah, he should always go Sand Slash. Nice. So I want to avoid the... Uh, I want to obviously avoid an Earthquake, so my best place to go is Zapdos. Uh, Electro can 1v1 it. Um, Dugtrio never has to worry about Electro, so it's not worried about that. Only thing it can, I know I just said that twice, but only thing Electro can do to Dugtrio is click Toxic. I mean, explode, excuse me. Hit Toxic. Um, so it goes Zapdos here. As he goes for Earthquake, yep. I guess I can attempt to Roost if he wants to go for Rock Slide on... Uh, if he goes for Earthquake on my Roost, it's a really good play, but... Because I obviously lose, I lose flying type. So flying types lose uh, their flying type when they go for roost. So he could hit me with earthquake if he wanted to. Um, but by me roosting, he doesn't beat me 1v1 with rock slide. And uh, basically, roosting also ensures I live a hit from every Pokemon. So like if he goes electrode for instance, which I don't care about it getting up its screens, it doesn't live, I, this doesn't allow Venusaur to beat me, right? And I get a toxic off an electro, which is so nice for Starmie. So we're going to Toxic here. Uh, the Zapdos wasn't necessary or isn't necessary. Zapdos is not necessary, so I don't mind him getting up a screen. Yep. Now all I got to do is spam Roost until I go down. Uh, Zam should never be able to beat me 1v1. 
Maybe he'll go for screens and then try and get in Venusaur, but I don't think Venusaur will live a hit no matter what. And the Zam on this team is Combine 3 attacks, so it doesn't have Recover. So if I do manage to land a Toxic with my Zapdos on it, it's over. It's also not Mega Zam as well, so it's, it's, I mean, it's not as fast, it's pretty frail. Uh, I don't really care for Sandslash. Sandslash should have never switched out, if anything. It should have stayed in. And the light screen really isn't going to help Sandslash too much either because I'm at full HP. So all I got to do is Toxic it. Wear down him with the... Wear down the screen and just click Scald. Or even just click Earthquake repeatedly with my Dugtrio. So Hypno just made a way, basically, for the end game that I'm going for. So while Hypno wasn't necessarily sweeping with its Nasty Plot, I never thought it would. Um, it was able to open up a door for a win at the end. We're obviously not, the game's obviously not over. But yeah, land my Toxic on Sand Slash, beautiful. So regardless of screens and whatnot, I should be able to 1v1 it. He's going to go for SD here. Doesn't really matter to me. That shouldn't make a difference as long as I waste some turns. Rock Slide at plus two doesn't knock me out anyway. What do I have in the back? I have exactly what I need in the back. So I'm going to just spam Roost. Um, at that point, it doesn't really matter. Rock Slide won't be able to knock me out. He might try and outplay me here and go for Earthquake on my Roost. But if he doesn't... I mean, even if he does, I have him at point of... I have him at the point of Light Screen beating him down, right? And if he doesn't get this turn right, then Zapdos 1v1s him. So, I have him at the point of basically Scald knocking him out regardless of screens. That's what I'm trying to say there. Let's see if he Earthquake on my Roost. Nope, just went for Double Rock Slide. And unfortunately misses. So he doesn't know about... Um, he doesn't know about Earthquaking on the Roost. He should go for Earthquake now. Not Rock Slide. That's alright, you live and learn. Hopefully he does go for Earthquake for those that don't believe what I'm saying. Nope. Rock slides again. I'm not trying to beat down this uh, this this sand slash or toxic. He should always earthquake here. He should always earthquake here. You lose flying type when you go for roost if you are a flying type. And Zapdos is obviously par flying. But yeah, like I said, all I needed was that toxic damage because regardless of light screen, as long as I had that damage racking up on sand slash, I won the game. I go for earthquake, bro. Come on, man. You know your gut wants it. It makes sense, dude. Flying types touch the ground. Nope, just rock slide again. Well, uh, that's definitely not going to be enough for Alec Azam. And my U-turn is going to do so much damage to Zam. So even if he goes Electro, I don't really mind. I basically just roost till the end of time. Um, Venusaur cannot live a Thunderbolt through light screen. It cannot live a U-turn through light screen because of the percentage it's at. I can try and end it earlier, but I guess I will try. No, go Zam. Okay, so he's going for the aggressive one. So I'll play it a little bit uh, quicker. So I'll just U-turn on Zam. I will be able to live a hit. If he goes for Calm Mind, it doesn't matter. I get a Mel Metal. I get a Duck Trio, and I'm good. One or the other. Goes for Psychic. Doesn't bother Calm Mining up. I eat that hit. Get some nice 70% with U-turn or so. 80%. My gosh, that was almost 90 uh, Alakazam goes down to Hazards. Get him, my boy, Young Melmetal. I live every hit. And I just spam Earthquake right now. That's it. I spam Earthquake till we win the game. So yeah, as I mentioned multiple times, guys, if a Flying type goes for Roost, like Zap, though, unless the Pokemon has Levitate, right? If a Flying type goes for... And there's no abilities in this game, so they shouldn't have Levitate. <laughs> if a Flying type goes for Roost... It loses its flying type for that turn. So every single time I was roosting on Sand Slash, as long as I was recovering with it, not when I was at full HP, but as long as I was actually recovering with Roost, he could have hit me with Earthquake and he could have knocked me out. I would have lost my flying type for that turn. I would have been pure Electro type and Earthquake would have been super effective and would have blown me away. But at this point, it doesn't really matter. He goes out to Electro. I, I win the game no matter what. I have the Lolan Duck on the back. Uh, Thunder may be able to knock me out. I, not even if he lands it. I doubt it. Goes for Light Screen first. But I think it's a misplay. I think you definitely want to reflect first. 
But I guess if you're planning on leech seeding and yeah, it's not like I can mi I can't he can't win. He had to thunder there. He had to thunder there and get rid of my uh, Melmetal, and even then, it didn't matter. I literally did not. Yeah, this is a really long video though. This is the longest video, the longest Let's Go video I had. But I hope you guys understand how important the Hypno damage in Game 1 and in Game 2 mattered. Because I already knew that I could win the game uh, pretty easily with my... Um, I already knew I could win the game pretty easily with my... Uh, what's it called? My Starmie in the back. Always. Could have won it with Starmie, could have won it with Melmetal, and that's what we were able to do. So, I do hope you guys all enjoyed. Again, I don't think Hypno was ever going to be able to sweep, but it did put in the work in a point that it got the damage I needed. I don't think my opponent should have given me the damage of Mega Venusaur. Mega Venusaur was definitely a threat, but uh, it's fine. I do hope you guys all enjoyed. Of course, if you did, feel free to leave a like and subscribe. You guys can check out the playlist down below to see other Pokemon I've used. Goodbye, my friends.